the aftermath right, so of we slavery, had part three, part three. And we're going to continue the conversation from part two regarding the status of the slaves, what, were, what was happening, and what was not actually documented in history. Uh, so, again, the laws were being passed, the statutes were being made, all these different things were, were being put into place uh, so that they can, the powers that be who owned slaves prior to the abolition, they could continue to reap the benefits based on their knowledge and based on really crooked tactics. Okay, so one of the things that happened was uh, the separation of peoples to say some were citizens or some were natives and some were not. Some were citizens, some were not. Some were, you know, state citizens or some were United States citizens, whatever the case may be. And this classification of humans based on your point of origin or, you, you know, um, based on your current status, you know, and if you could gain a, a, a status to be advantageous of, you know, and all these different things. And again, <clears throat> people were using common sense, you know, to say, okay, well, if this status is advantageous, I want to do everything I can in order to gain this status. So when we talk about becoming a citizen or talking about becoming, you know, a national or whatever other statuses were there, again, if you have nothing, a little bit of something is going to feel like a lot, right? It's going to feel like, okay, well, I'm, I'm getting out of my situation. Now I have some rights. Now I have some defense. Now I have, you know, this access to this resource. You have, you know, different reasons why people did different things, right? And uh, a lot of what progressed beyond that is the building of black communities, the, 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 the huddling or the community of peoples that came together of the like, right? So now, remember, almost, I would say about 80% of the labor that was being done was being done by um, people of brown skin. So when slavery ended and all these people were the only people who had the skills necessary to perform the jobs that were necessary to keep society running yes you know white people um they had most of the resources but you have to now realize that one colored folks weren't being taxed you know um or even or, or as heavy as uh, a business owner would and you know there were a, a lot of little things that accumulated over the years where brown people's wealth began to accumulate we started to gain a little bit of a foothold to at least own land to at least own a home and to at least own the ba the basic necessities of life and we're going to continue on that